recording again. All right. And are you going to get the grades from the quiz we took? Oh, you didn't get those? No. Sorry, I have them. No, but are you, you're keeping those grades. Yeah, I'll keep the grades. Yeah. Whatever it was. Ah, okay, so we're going to talk about alcohols, phenols, thiols, and ethers. Okay, and if you don't know what those are, we'll learn. Okay, so don't freak out yet. But I'm assuming you learned about alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, right? It has C and H. And alkene has what? A double bond. And an alkyne has? triple. Did you guys learn how to name them? Yeah. Learn the naming, the, the eins and the eens, right? Okay, good. So what we're covering now is functional groups. Okay, because an alkene and an alkyne, that's a functional group. Why do we call it a functional group? Because it gives it its function. That's like, I know that sounds redundant. <laughs> I recorded that, didn't I? Yeah, I yeah. so it gives it its function, but it, it you know, it, for chemistry, that's kind of nice. For chemistry, it, um, it means like its chemical properties, its physical properties. So the functional group gives the molecule those features. Because really, C's and H's are pretty boring, and they really don't do anything. Okay, C's and H's by themselves. The only good thing that they do is burn, right? So if you put a functional group on it, <laughs> the heck? If you put a functional group on it, that will give it some unique properties. So just real quickly, um, the functional group like an alcohol. Oh, can you see that color okay? Or should I use a different color or a fatter pen? Fatter pen. Let me use fatter pen. And uh, hmm, how fat should I make it? Oh, it's one pixel. I'll do three pixels. And let's try it. See how it goes. Yeah, it's better. So an alcohol has an OH group on it. So I'm going to just sort of squeeze some of this in underneath. And then it's connected to an alkane or an alkene or an alkyne. But if you put the OH on it, we call it an alcohol. So like when I say, hey, you're going to go out and get some alcohol, right? What are you getting? You're getting an OH, right? Now, it's not just any alcohol. The alcohol you drink is called ethyl alcohol. What's ethyl mean? Two carbons, right? So ethyl alcohol, the, the drinking alcohol, is the alcohol that has two carbons and an OH group on it. So if you were to draw the structure, did you guys work on drawing structures? All right, you would draw the structure of ethyl alcohol as CH3, CH2, and then one of those H's would disappear. Ah, oh, really? Somebody does that to the screen, like they blow up the middle of it because of something, and I don't know what it is, so sorry, thank you for looking perplexed and letting me know. <laughs> So, now that was a good thing, CH3. Sometimes people just look perplexed and don't say anything like that. That's an alcohol. So that's ethyl alcohol. This is drinking alcohol. I'm not saying it's good for you, but I think, you know, after this week, I'm going to need, like, a whole bunch. So, <laughs> sorry. Phenols are benzene rings. You guys learn what a benzene ring is? Okay, is a benzene ring with an OH group on it. So a phenol is a type of alcohol. It's got an alcohol functional group. So who remembers what a benzene ring looks like? How many carbons? Six. And what's the shape? Hexagon. Hexagon. Good. So we'll go like this. And we'll put an OH on it. Now this is a bond line drawing. Did you guys see bond line drawing? Your book calls them something else, like line drawings or something, where you don't draw the C's and H's. Did you guys go over that? That's a bond line drawing. The circle in the middle is to indicate that the double bonds are all there. Okay, So that's a bond line drawing. That's, uh, that's a phenol. Uh, phenols, you find them in a lot of different uh, interesting things. Uh, one of them is it's in like uh, Lysol. You find phenols in Lysol. It's used for like disinfecting, so it's a disinfectant. And you find it actually, oddly enough, in throat sprays because it helps to kill the bacteria and soothe your throat. And I don't know how to explain the smell, but once you smell it, you're like, oh, that doesn't smell too bad. It's a little medicine-y, a little bit sweet, 
But I worked with, uh, but if you get like pure phenol, it'll like dissolve your skin. <laughs> but very dilute solutions has got some uh, medicinal uses, okay? So then we have thiols. Uh, oh, I'm almost off the thing again. And thiols is not your thighs. <laughs> That's what you get after you eat Thanksgiving dinner twice, and then you have big thiols. No, thiols are alkanes. Sorry. I can almost go two minutes and be serious. Is it sulfur? That's a thiol. Thiols, though, um, are also known as mercaptans, and we'll get into some of this, but I just thought it'd be fun to introduce these this way. I wrote it right on the guy's cap tan. Mercap tan. Kind of get a bad rap because they're in a lot of things, but most styles just smell horrible. My mom is a pharmacist, a retired pharmacist. She worked for like 40 years um, or more. And uh, she used to bring home uh, sodium sulfide for us to play with. Now, sodium sulfide is just the SH part. Eh, kind of wrote there. Is the SH part of the bercaptan or the thiol, and it smells horrible. I had an accident in the lab here where we had a little bottle. It was about this big. It was a little, uh, lab bottle where you could open it up, and a little uh, H2S would come out. And the lab tech back then thought it was empty, and he went like this. And he realized it had stuff in it, and it smelled so bad. It smells like raw sewage. Mm -hmm. It smelled so bad that we had to evacuate the entire third floor just from that little bit coming out. So thiols or mercaptans are also what we use for like putting in gas lines, so you can tell there's a gas leak. It's that smell. What was really funny about that one incident, although it's, I could tell you more, more stories about this stuff, but uh, was that uh, my students were taking a test. And they were all sitting there really quiet, minding their own business. And then it smells like raw sewage in the test. And everybody thinks somebody farted. <laughs> and so they're all like, oh, my God. And I'm like, then I go back and find out what it is. I come out and say, OK, guys, you got to leave the room. I made them finish the test outside. But. <laughs> yeah, so that you got that teacher, by the way. So uh, And then ethers. Ethers are used for anesthetics. And that's why they're showing. Um, a nurse anesthetist, a nurse anesthetist, and an anesthesiologist are two different people. But a nurse anesthetist and an anesthesiologist have a great deal of training in how to monitor vital signs and what drug doses to give patients. But ethers are something like this: R, O, and R. Did he go in, into the R notation? It's the rest of the molecule. R rest. So like. An ether, the real common uh, ether that people, oops, see, is this one. Oh, sorry. It actually had, oh, sorry, I ran out of space because this slide's not meant for this. That's some of the stuff I have to work out. So that bond, uh, that bond shouldn't really look like that. Oh, my God, it's not even on the screen. Sorry, let me draw it somewhere else. I could really just do this, but um, get rid of everything in the background, and then just do this. This is known as diethyl ether. Why do you think it's called diethyl? There's two ethyl groups on it, two CH. Two, two carbon chains, one on each side, right here and one here. Diethyl ether. This, is, this used to be the very common anesthetic uh, when anesthetics were first being used. So I could imagine that you went in in the early 1700s and you had an abscess under a fingernail which got gangrenous and they had to cut it off. They would just hold you down. <laughs> yeah? So anything you can use to knock them out. So this was one of the first ones. 
And uh, only problem with this is it's re- it depresses your breathing and stuff really bad. And so you, you can just not recover from it. So, But it, hey, if you're going to have your arm or leg cut off, I guess it's not so bad. It's a risk you're willing to take. I don't know. Anyways, there's a lot of these things. Okay. So um, I thought I would review uh, naming and drawing of alkanes. This is one of those core skills. One of the reasons I like this book is because it reviews these things from time to time. We are going to name this ugly beast. Um, What do you do first, just in general terms? Count the carbons. And we we call that, okay, the parent chain. So we, we do what's called identify the parent chain. I am a parent, too, so I appreciate all of you who are parents. And I sometimes feel like these molecules. I'm a parent chain, and I'm dragging all these little things around with me. And the parent chain needs to get numbered. Now, remember, the parent chain is the longest carbon chain. Second thing you do, you number the parent chain. Now, I made this one relatively easy to find because there's only one parent chain. Now we have to number it. What's the rule? Yeah, you number from the end that's closest to the first branch or functional group, okay? So... So uh, if I started here, it would be 1, 2, and 3. If I start here, it's 1 and 2, so that's the end that I number from. So now I'm going to number like this, 1, 2, 3, 4. And if I miss one, let me know because I do that a lot. 5, 6, and 7. And then after you do that, you identify, it's called the locant or the location, the locant, the location, the number of each functional group in its name, okay? So I'm going to call it what we normally call an organic chemistry. By the way, that's what I do. I teach organic chemistry most of the time. So anyways, when we get to the biochemistry, I might have some of you guys that have had biology more recently than I have come up and start talking because... I've had uh, a number of advanced biochemistry classes when I was young. And when I was young, I was older than most of you. So So locant and name of functional groups. I'm just going to call them FGs just because eventually I'll get rid of the periods there just because I don't want to write it over and over again. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So I have... On two, what do I have? It's a chlorine, so we'll call it chloro. And on three, I have something? Bromo, right? Doesn't, I capitalize a lot when I don't need to, but I capitalize there and I didn't need to. Oh, and look, the bottom of the screen is missing too. Wow, I hate this room. Sorry. <laughs> I've actually said before that I'll never teach in this room again, but now I'm teaching in this room again, so I guess I don't have any choice. And then five, I did five because I thought maybe you hadn't seen one of those before. What is that thing? It's a triangle, yeah. Now, how many carbons in there? Three. So it's prop, right? And it's actually cyclopropane. Did you guys learn about cyclic compounds? So that's actually cyclopropane, but... Because oh, I put a period on the five, because it's a substituent. You just say cyclopropyl. Just like that. Now, what do you do? Because we name, we name, 
find the parent chain, number the parent chain, identify the locants and the names of the substituents, and now what? Alphabetical order. Alphabetical order. Yay, the alphabet. Um, <laughs> but you know what I always find myself doing? A, B, C, D. <laughs> so which one's <laughs> the, the bromo is going to go first, and then the chloro is going to go second, and then the cyclopropyl is going to go third, Okay, because it's a CY instead of a CH. Okay, so that's why I put that cyclo in there so I can screw around the alphabetization a little bit more. So now this becomes three bromo. And if I ever start writing down here and you don't see it up there, please let me know because sometimes weird things happen. Two chloro. Five. Cyclo, uh -huh. propyl, and then I have to name the parent. Oh, I forgot the I forgot the name the parent chain. What's seven? Heptane. Okay. So that's that. Good. Questions. Yeah, the, yeah, it's kind of like when you think about it, when you go to like the amusement park, you're never the first one in because you don't know where your children are. Or maybe you don't have children, but I'm just saying. I have six children, so I have to know where they're at. So I'm always the last one in line, and my children are always in front of me, so the parent goes last. We went all over the United States this summer. And my wife, who also teaches here, made these awesome shirts. We had all these Captain, we had Captain America tie-dye shirts, and... Um, and like American flag ones, so that when you go somewhere, like people go, oh, those are your children. <laughs> One of your children's doing that. I'm like, oh, thank you. Two of them are in college, so you know they actually flew up down this, but it was fun. Went to Minnesota, but we went all the way around Yellowstone and uh, Mount Rushmore and Badlands, South Dakota. Saw the Corn Palace. Who's seen the Corn Palace? All right. And then, uh, yeah, it's not. It, yeah, you don't really want to go there, but you kind of have to go there. And then uh, Minnesota, and then we came back down through Iowa, and then uh, uh, we went through Arizona, Colorado, and Rocky Mountain National Park, and then um, Mesa Verde. Who's been to Mesa Verde? That's a place you need to go. It's the uh, Indian cave dwellings, and you can actually go in, because they're underneath these cliffs. Like, it's like insane, these cliffs. They're like straight up and down, and they built these cities inside the cliffs, and you can go see them. Really fun. Sorry. Ah, I was just decompressing. It's been a long day. Now, let's, let's do this one. So we have uh, six bromo, one chloro, three methyl, uh, cyclooctane. So what do you do first? Draw the cyclooctane, right? So cyclooctane, oops, sorry, go back. Cyclooctane is like a stop sign. So it's an eight-sided, and you could put stop in here. I mean, it's literally like a stop <laughs> sign. Right? So I'll get rid of that because you don't usually put that in the structure. And then what you do is you identify all the substituents, and you just stick them on in whatever order it makes sense. Okay. So it says one chloro. I'm not sure it's why it's one chloro, actually, but we'll see. I made this one up to be tricky, and then... Um, so one chloro means that I have a Cl group on the one carbon, so I was just going to go like this, Cl, and then you just number it. One, two... What? You can put it wherever. Oh, yeah, 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 so... You could do it like this. In fact, I will do it like this, because I just realized where I had it, you can't see it. Well, okay, so <clears throat> I could. Um, I was the bad person who played with this, and it got stuck. <laughs> and then people were mad at me, and I just never confessed. So that's one chloro, and then I'm going to number my ring. Right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the numbers on the inside. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
And it doesn't matter which way you number, clockwise or counterclockwise. If you draw, if you number it the other way, you just draw the molecule as if you viewed it from the other side. Okay, it's just the reverse. It's like you're looking at it from the other side, where we're all looking at it from this side. Be that way, fine. Okay, so if six is bromo, so I just do it like this and put a burr on it. And then um, three is methyl. So three is methyl. Like that. C H three. And with CH three, or can you just put a line? Or you can just put a line, yeah. Um, I usually draw the CH three because sometimes just a line, people forget what it is. Yeah. But either way, it's correct. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, I see why. Huh? No, no. Yeah, none of that crazy stuff. All right. She's in another class of mine, so. Oh, there's a lot on this slide. Okay, so let's go over what these things are. This is kind of what I drew up before, okay? But this is a little bit more organized. So an alcohol... By the way, these are the systematic names, the IUPAC names. Did you learn about IUPAC? That's what we, how we name stuff. It's the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. They're the bunch of old guys that sit around and decide what to call things. Okay, so um, that's this group here. So we're going to learn to give IUPAC in common names for a bunch of different alcohols and phenols and thiols, and then we'll draw their condensed structures and their bond line. They call it line angle in the book. I've always learned it's bond line. So I will stick with bond line, but you realize that that's what they call it in your book. Okay? So an alcohol contains a hydroxyl group, like an OH. And, okay, are you guys are familiar with acids and bases. You've had some acid-base stuff in the past. Bases have OHs too, right? Like sodium hydroxide. The difference is, is in an, in an organic molecule as a functional group, the oxygen is not bonded to a metal. And all those bases that you looked at before, like barium hydroxide or calcium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide or lithium or whatever the hydroxide was, those are always some metal in OH, and those are ionic compounds. These are covalent. They're bonded together, literally, with a single bond. And uh, that's what makes it an alcohol versus a base. So these don't actually act as bases. If anything, they act as acids. Okay? So it's a very different property. So an alcohol contains a hydroxyl functional group. The systematic name is very easy to derive. It's meth, oops, sorry, meth, and then, so methane, right? Get rid of the E, add O-L. Huzzah, we're done, methanol. Phenol is a systematic name in itself, and I'll teach you a little bit more about its nomenclature, but it's a hydroxyl group that's on a benzene ring. And a thiol okay, has the SH functional group. But notice this is the systematic name. And the thing that the systematic name for thiols has in it that it doesn't have for alcohol is they keep the E. Why? Because then you don't have to try to pronounce N-T-H. It would be eth. <laughs> All right, so they put ethane thiol just so that you could say it. Also known as mercaptans, okay? But again, like alcohols, all you do is you take the name of the hydrocarbon and you attach the suffix to it, either OL for an alcohol or thiol for uh, a thiol. Sorry, it's SH for a thiol. So you're going to have to be able to identify these things. Uh, I just left this uh, slide in for completeness, but you're going to either have them as these condensed Lewis structures, so that's what this is called, right. or bond line. And in bond line, for these functional groups, you, you know how on... Um, Alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, we almost never, for bond line, draw the H's. 
when the functional group, like an alcohol or a phenol or a thiol is present, we always draw the H that's attached to it, okay? Questions? I'm trying to be clear, but sometimes I'm not so good at that. I have six children. I have to be patient. Okay, so how do you know? So systematic, you guys know what a common name is? Like common name? Like my son Tommy, his Thomas is his real name. His common name is Tommy, it's what everybody calls him. His systematic name, the one I named him, is Thomas, right? But everybody calls him Tommy. I even call him Tommy unless like I'm pissed. <laughs> No, I actually even call him Tommy then. Actually, what I do is I call him every other name, and then I call him. Yeah. Every other my children's name, not all the swear words I know in different languages. Yeah, yeah. We knew all, we all knew. So, yeah, so a common name is just what everybody calls it. So, ah, oh, shoot, sorry, that hand. Um, systematic names never end in the name of the functional group, but... Common names always end in the name of the functional group. So if you hear ethyl alcohol, you know that's a common name because it ends in the word alcohol. Right? Systematic names are more condensed. Condensed. Oops, sorry. I keep doing that. Are more condensed. And the systematic names end in a suffix where a common name ends in the functional group, okay? So now, how do you do a common name? You name the alkane as a substituent, okay? So let's say it's this. Oh, thank you. I just, I drew it on the bottom where I wasn't supposed to. Yeah, let's say it's that. And you want to come up with a, cyst, a common name for that. How many carbons are in there? Four. Four? I think four. So there's one. And a, so there's one, two, three, four. And that's an O, not another carbon, okay? So it's a butane, right? So the common name would just be butyl alcohol, okay? So remember, if it's a butane and it's a substituent, you'd say butyl, so you just call it butyl alcohol. It's as if that group is attached to a substituent. So this would be, I'm just trying to find a place to put this, because he's. I was expecting to be able to draw on the screen, but I cannot draw everywhere. Because it's butane, let's do that, butane. Get rid of this last part and put a YL on it as a substituent and just say alcohol, butyl alcohol. The, the one that you should know, okay, is this one. Oh, you know what, let me do it this way. Yeah, that's the common name version. Wait, what did I say? Oh, sorry, I never finished yet. Butyl alcohol. I have this problem. I think ahead and then I never finish. So stop me when I do that. She did exactly the right thing, by the way. Feel free to, when I don't make sense, say you don't make sense, and then I will try to fix it. Okay, so um, this is the one I think you just have to know. Okay, so what is this? Propyl. It's propyl, right? But you notice how propyl alcohol would be the OH coming off the end. But this one's coming off the middle. So it's an isomer. It's called an isomer of propyl alcohol. So this is isopropyl alcohol. So like rubbing alcohol, when, like after this class, and you're like, 
horrible stress and your friend gives you a back rub and uses rubbing alcohol, this is rubbing alcohol. Personally, I don't know why people pour it all over themselves, but whatever. Does it feel good? It smells horrible, I think. But I just keep thinking, that's going in my skin. Rubbing, it's rubbing alcohol. That's why they call it rubbing alcohol. I don't know. It cools the skin. I use it on cuts. Use it on cuts? Just rub dirt in it. You'll be fine. Sorry. I grew up on a farm, by the way. And then they let me go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So the, that's the isopropyl alcohol is the common name for that. Now, the systematic name, again, I will just make a blank slide for this. That's propane, right? So... Alcohol name is you get rid of the E and you add the OL. And you know that the OH is not on the number one carbon. It's on the number two carbon, right? So it's called 2-propanol. And the 2 is telling people it's an alcohol. It's on the number two carbon. Wait, how did you get the 2 again? Oh, I just counted 1, 2, Oh, it doesn't matter which end you count from because it's in the middle. So that's one of those happy ones where you can't go wrong. Um, so it used to be all nice and everything. Then IUPAC did this to us. Propan to all because um, it turns out sometimes it's easier to put things into the front of the name and make it clear if you just say, okay, to be very clear, the two is referring to where the alcohol is, okay? Um, I don't actually, having, having had so much time to study the book, don't know which standard the, the book is on, okay? So I think it's probably two propanol. That's like what normal everyday chemists do and propan to all is what uh, disciples of IUPAC do so <laughs> anyways I won't on go the to the no usually if they say if you say butanol it's redundant to say one if it's on the one although you'll see this it's in pretty common practice they'll put an N in front of it so for example um, let's see let me just go to why does it keep doing that? Go back to this slide real quick. If you have a butanol that looks like this, it looks like that, then um, what people will do is say, oh, that is N butanol. The N refers to it's the normal butanol, right? So you might see the N, and that just means whatever the functional group is is on the very end of the molecule. And it's a straight chain, so it's like it doesn't have any branches on it. Um, another version of butanol, a, a butanol would be this. Okay. And that's also that has a common name. It's called isobutyl alcohol. But. Oh, I just know it. Sorry. I, I, I counted. I went one, two, three, four. And that's how I know it's a butanol. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I just skipped the step. But she said, how do you know when the end goes? And so I just threw one on there. But yeah, to name it, you have to count, convert it to an alcohol, identify the parent, and then convert it to an alcohol name. Yeah. Right, so this is a common name. So they call it isobutyl alcohol because it has four carbons, right? So it's got one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's got also two methyl propanol, okay? So it's got a bunch of names, but when I call it isobutyl alcohol, that's the common name. 
if we call it 2-methylpropanol, that's the systematic name because it ends in the OL. Go, go fire away. So for the parent name, you said we go off the longest chain. Yeah. So that second one, it's going to count as the three carbons for the name of the parent. Uh-huh. And then, but it's still considered butte as if it had... Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Let me just do this. Let me make this really clear because I don't want you to... I mean, I don't want there to be more confusion because <laughs> it, it can be really like, which is which, right? So you would systematically, you would count the carbon chain. So you'd say three carbons, okay? And you would say that's propane, right? So it's a propanol in the systematic terminology, right? Now, when you do that, then you go one, two, and three. So on the two carbon, there's a methyl group, all right? So you name the parent chain. You identify the parent chain, convert its name to an alcohol, and then you identify the substituents. In this case, there's one substituent. It's on the number two carbon here, right? So I'm going to say, oh, that little blurb, I'm going to use a little accident I had on the screen earlier. So it's two methyl, right? And so now when you do the name systematically, it's 2-methylpropanol. On the chain, we don't have to put the No, you don't. That's just like, I'm just warning you guys, like when you get like common literature for things, they'll have like N's in front of it sometimes. Sometimes they'll have an I, but they'll have an N. N means it's just a straight chain, whatever it is. Okay, no branches. So this would be a straight chain because it just goes on forever. And, yeah. yeah, and this is a branched one. It's an isomer. So that's why you might see an I for iso. Isomer. The iso is when it's branched? That's yeah, there's more to it than that, and I don't know how far you guys got into it, but I can, I can give you a little uh, primer on that uh, at the end of the lecture if, you, if we're still curious, but it's not that hard. And for the S, um, were you asked for like, a certain name? Yeah, so I'll give you a structure and say name it systematically and name it, give it the common name. Okay. And then, you know, it's not going to be like Godzilla structure that has 500 carbons. <laughs> um, right, if I remember right, you guys are not training to be organic chemists. Yeah. yeah, so I will not treat you that way. However, I will treat you as adults, which my experience is lots of organic chemists aren't. But that's okay. Grow up in a little fantasy world sometimes. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, name these and do bond lines. Now, <clears throat> we named uh, two of these already, okay? So I'm just going to write the names and we'll, we'll name the last one. Um, but this one is propanol, right? We named that one already. And this one is 2-propanol, so we named that one already. But this one, we have to do still. And you'll notice they put two hydroxy groups on it. So it's got two functional groups. So now it becomes a diol, OK? That middle one is the same thing as isopropyl? Yeah, same as isopropyl, yeah. So this one is 2-propanol. So you, uh, I'll just go over it really quickly again, because I know this is all really new to you. So this is like one two, and three, right? So it's propane. And the alcohol functional group is on the number two carbon. So you would say for that one, two propane, right? But then you get rid of the E and you change it to OL. Isopropyl is the attachment in the middle. And like I said, I can go over like how you get all the iso structures, but it's kind of an aside, and I don't want to get too far off. Um, it's somewhat important to know it, but I don't think it's that important at this point. So now this one on the right, that's known as a diol. And if it had three, like it says up here, it'd be a triol. Sugars actually have, let's see, like glucose, right? Um, has how many OH groups on it? Six. 
No, five OH groups. So it would be a pentanol. So like glucose, the sugar, is a pentanol. Okay. I did that. I counted it in my head really quick. So I could be off by one, but I'm pretty sure it's a pentanol. Now, this one, I'm going to number the, this one on the right, I'll number the parent chain. So I'm going to start from this end, right, because that gives me the lowest number for the parent the functional group. So I'm going to call this 1, 2, 3, 4. And then um, I'm going to name it. Now, the two functional groups are both the alcohol functional group, so it's a diol, right? But you notice they're on different carbons. So you just number the carbons. So you would say one, two, and four is what? Butane, right? Butane. Oh, darn it. I forgot the E goes in there, actually. Butane diol. Butane diol. I think it doesn't have to. Diol. I'll have to look at it. I forgot if the E goes in there or not. Okay, so let's look at, uh, let's do the bond line real quick. Can, it has E? Okay, thank you. I could go either way. I can say it either way, so I'm like, well, I don't know. And really, the E is just there, like I said, because of the thiol. It's just it's hard to pronounce it. All right, so bond lines for the first one. Uh, just a little trick. When you draw the first carbon, draw a dot. Or a lot of times, you forget to draw the first one. So you go one, two, three. So there's three carbons, right? And there's the fourth, like OH for the, for the OH. Isopropyl, we've gotten that drawn already. That looks like this. Now, butane diol has a four-carbon parent chain, right? So again, draw a four-carbon chain and then add the OHs to it. Now, you could draw it going like this, or you could draw it going like that, which you can't see, but I'm not going to use that one anyway, so I'll get rid of it. It doesn't matter. On the number one carbon, I put an OH like this. And on the number two carbon, I put an OH like that. Did that fit? Oh, just barely. There we go. Okay. Questions? Okay, so a cyclic alcohol is known as a cycloalkanol. And guess how you name it? Same way you name an alcohol. Okay. Name the parent, which is the ring. Add the OH as the functional group. Okay. The OL, sorry, the OL is for the functional group. So you notice the first one on the left, right? Be like that. Hmm. Six carbons, right? So it's a hexane. But it's a cyclohexane because it's a ring. So naming it, I would say cyc. Oops, sorry, did it again. Cyclohexane. But we're gonna get rid of that and just put an ol like that, and so it becomes cyclohexanol. Okay. So it's the exact same process that you went through for naming alkane alcohols normal chain or straight chain, branch chains. Just get rid of the E, add OL. Now, for the alcohol that's on this side, okay, which carbon should be number one, do you think? The OH. And here's something that's very important to remember right now. If there's an OH in it, it's always number one. When we go to carboxylic acids, like you find in amino acids or proteins and things like that, the carboxylic acid carbon usually gets number one. But for alcohols, the number one carbon will be here. Then what you do when you have a ring structure is you start with the one, and then you do just like you think you might. You count in the direction that hits the first substituent first. 
In this case, I'll go clockwise. Hmm. I'll make the pen a little thinner. I think it's just a little bit too fat. And then I named the function. So the parent, so let's name the parent. It's a cyclo. So when you see a ring, don't forget it's cyclo. Pin, tan, and instead of writing the E and crossing it out, I just won't write it, right? It's cyclo, pin, tan, null. And then the number one carbon is the OH, so all I have to do is give a number to the functional group, and the functional group is what? It's a 2-methyl. So it's a 2-methyl cyclopentanol, and you just jam those together. And we're good. Yeah, because um, the cyclo is part of the name of the parent, so you never break up the parent name. So let me, I'll write it all out. I'm practicing my handwriting because I have horrible handwriting. Did I run out of space? Oh, no, I didn't. Good. I'd probably be better off if I could write with crayons. Um, questions? So far, so good? Do we need to know how to do the common name? Oh, um, the one on the left is the only one that has a common name, and it will be, what do you think would be? What do you think the common name for this guy would be? Close. Remember, you say cyclohexane, but you convert it to a functional group name, so cyclohexyl alcohol. Yeah. No, because it has this weird branch on it, right? So there's not like a name for that. So things that have common names are usually very simple in structure: rings, a straight chain, right? Might have an iso in it occasionally, but yeah, usually very simple structures have common names. Oh, except for things like uh, if you said uh, estrogen, that's a common name too. But we have those because the systematic names are horrible. They're like gut-wrenching, multiple numbers, multiple names in parentheses and brackets, yeah. So then we learn estrogen. And then you kind of memorize the structure. Can you take out the E and below that's showing you that it's an alcohol, right? Yeah. Um, where am I? I think that's all I want to say about that. So let's go on to the next thing. These are phenols. Now, we're going to have to learn some funny nomenclature for, for phenols. By the way, um, you can I think you can just download these slides from the Internet. I think your book probably has a link uh, besides the one that I edited. So you can see all the stuff that I took out. If you want, when I edit, I could just delete the slides and put them at the end so you could have the content. I don't, I don't care either way, really. I just, you can see what I do to the slides, hack them up, that kind of stuff. You just let me know. Oh, um, yeah, one other thing. This is not going on YouTube. Uh, that's my cell phone number. You can text me. I have this really crazy schedule. Don't text me at 8 in the morning. Because <laughs> I'm usually up till 2 or 3 in the morning. Simply because I start here at noon. And I go till 9 o'clock usually. And then I have to get some other work done. I wake up for a little bit in the morning to get kids off to school. And, you know, whatever else I do early in the morning, like find coffee or whatever. And then I go back to sleep for a little bit. Okay, so just saying, you can just text me questions to there. I've never had a tr problem with it, but if you annoy me, I will block your number. Okay? Never, literally never had a problem. Every teacher tells me, oh, man, I'd never do that. I'm like, 
I don't see why not. And then I get these cool texts like, hey, I graduated. Right? I love those things. It's like, and then you change phones and you forget who those people are, but they still graduated. It says right there, 559 something something graduated. Oh, sorry. So, um, so um, you're going to name phenols as phenols, not as alcohols, although a phenol is an alcohol. And there's a couple of things to know about uh, the nomenclature of phenols. One is how do you number the thing? Okay. And really, the numbering is pretty simple. It's as you expect. Wherever the OH is, is 1. Okay? That's the easy thing. And you'll name it as a phenol. So look at some of these. This is a systematic name. 3-chlorophenol, because this is 1, 2, and 3. That's where the chlorine is. This one's 4-ethylphenol, 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is 3-methyl, uh, 1, 2, 3-methylphenol. Okay. Now, you notice there's this little thing that's down here, and you do need to know this, uh, except for they didn't include all of them. Wow, that's too sad. So if a benzene ring has an OH group, Sorry, back up. If a benzene ring has two groups on it, this is the only time this applies, but it's very common. We have letter designations for position. So let's say that's where the first one is. The second one comes out here. This is ortho. We use O as the prefix for ortho. Must mean next to in Greek or Latin, I don't know. Meta means, I think, like in between. So that's meta, or M. Um, and the last one is when there are on one and four. And this is P for para. Kind of means in the Latin means along with, so they're both going in the same direction. Right? So para is that, and it's in the one and four. So if the two function, if one of them has to be, it has happens to be an OH group, then it becomes a phenol, and then you can name it as M chlorophenol because the chlorine is in the meta position or in the third position, uh, or if it is. Uh, M creosol. What do you think O creosol looks like? They're just next to each other. So, so if you were to do an O creosol, it would be. And I'm going to freak you out and put the OH at the bottom. So where would I put the CH3? Either side's okay. It's as if you drew it from the other side, right? You're looking at, I'm drawing it like this, but if you drew it on the other side, it'd be the same molecule, just looking at it from it the other side. Okay. Maybe it's easier to think of flipping it over, but yeah. Is it only on phenols or other? Any benzene ring with two substituents. You can't do it with three or four, it's only with two. But it happens so often, they just have its own, it has its own nomenclature. And as with a lot of things, you know, it's been around so long. Okay, so I didn't know when the class started. <laughs> Am I supposed to know when it ends? So I already did all this. This is in the slide. So hang on, let me just see something really quick. Yeah, well, it's, it's, we don't have that much more, so I'm going to do thiols. So when we go to lab, I'm actually going to lecture on this section, and then I'll randomly pick the next section to lecture on, and we'll lecture on the lab. Now, where are we going? I know, but I'm going to tell you, we're just going next door. We're going to go to 220. That's my classroom. Okay. So right next door, that's my normal room.
And if you don't want to come on Wednesday for lab and you're in the Wednesday section, just come to Monday because it's you're gonna cover all the same stuff. And I would stay in here all night if I could, I guess. <laughs> um, so regarding the adding. Yeah, let's figure you, you out. Okay. I was in the class and I accidentally dropped me. Is that going to happen this one person every semester? You're like, I was that person, you know? So, um, so if it doesn't, I could try to redo it if it didn't go through. I don't know. First of all, um, are you Monday or Wednesday? I'm Wednesday. And then how are your office hours? I didn't get a chance to look at the soul No, I, I don't think I posted it. So my office hours are... Do you have any tomorrow? No. Tomorrow's Tuesday. Or before the test, at least. Oh, yeah. Well, I have what, Thursday and Friday. Okay. But I'll, I'll, I'll remind me to talk about office hours, because I might have to set up some office hours for this class. Yeah. So you, could you add me right now? No, I can't do the ads. The, the best I could do is like contact them and say, hey, the students dropped accidentally. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I was like in the class. So that was... And I don't mind adding you, it's just... Uh, I, just, I don't do it. I don't have that ability. Faculty don't get the chance to add people. So. Uh, let's see. Class roster. And it's a... Uh, which class is it? A Monday? Wednesday lab. I guess it's this one. Yeah, it's this one. And your name is? Hannah Lorenzen. see you in that one. Okay. I do have ad slips, and uh, what I'll do, if I don't get any, I don't know which one's Monday or Wednesday, so. Lorenzen? Yeah. No, you're not here. Okay. So we need to get you added. I don't know what the last thing to add is. It hasn't passed yet, has it? If it has, we'll do what's called a speed. The last day to drop. Yeah, what's the last day to add? Anybody know the last day to add a class? Like really know and not guessing, because that's what I do. No? It seems like it should be right. Okay, but if, it, if it's already passed, the thing called a speedy, we can just get you in. Okay. Um, can we just email you tonight? Try to see if I can redo it, and then if it's not going to let me. I'm going to give you another ad code. Okay. And you can add it either way because that's all you need. Get in. It yeah. should be all you need to get in. And then um, if it doesn't work, um, then we need to contact uh, uh, student services. Okay. And I can send an email to somebody and maybe they can fix it. I don't know. But I don't think I can undo it. I can't undo drops once okay. they're done. Did he drop you as a no show? No, he, well, what happened, I had a family emergency, and he knew, but then he accidentally just didn't see that. Dang. So. All right, let me go get yeah. you another ad code. Okay. Do you guys need something? Yeah, I just came from eight. Oh, yeah, hang on. Are you in?